Welcome to the Randy Report. I'm Randy Slavacek, your host. I'm also the writer and editor of therandyreport.com, where you can find me every single day on the internet reporting on the daily news cycle in terms of politics, pop culture, and entertainment news of interest to the LGBTQ community and its allies. In this week's headlines, out athletes at the Summer Olympic Games in Tokyo totally represent. Defensive end Carl Nassib says the support he's received from his Las Vegas Raiders teammates since he came out as gay has been incredible. Plus, new music from out country artist Hayden Joseph. All that and more in this episode of The Randy Report. As the Olympic Summer Games in Tokyo have come to a close, queer sports website OutSports has followed the medal count with their own LGBTQ rainbow twist. At least 182 out athletes from about 30 countries participated in the Tokyo Games, a far cry from the 56 athletes who competed in the 2016 Summer Games in Rio de Janeiro. In 2012, there were only 23 out athletes at the Summer Games. In Tokyo this summer, at least 55 out athletes who competed in 35 different sports won medals. Out sports track the achievements of those out athletes at the Summer Games, reimagining them as a unified team. They included all of the athletes who publicly identify as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and or non-binary. Had they been their own country... Team LGBTQ would have finished 7th in the medal count, ahead of France, Germany, Italy, Canada, and Brazil. Pretty impressive. By the time the Olympic torch went dark, Team LGBTQ had won 32 medals, 11 gold medals, 12 silver, and 9 bronze. Outsports also notes, with a hint of irony, that Team LGBTQ earned more medals than any of the nations where homosexuality is a crime. How about that? I'll have a link in the show notes to Outsports' website with the complete listing of all of the out medalists in Tokyo. Congratulations, Team LGBTQ! Las Vegas Raiders defensive end Carl Nassib told members of the press this past week that the reaction has been incredible since coming out as openly gay in an Instagram post on June 21st. In doing so, Nassib became the first out active player in the NFL. In his first public comments since his announcement, the 28-year-old talked about how much better he feels on the field since coming out, the reception he received from his Raiders teammates upon his arrival at training camp, and how he hopes his announcement has helped others. Here are just some of his responses from that press conference with audio courtesy of the Las Vegas Raiders. Asked if he was surprised by the size of the reaction to his coming out, Nassib said, I was definitely surprised by the uh, big reaction. It was, it was incredible. I thought nobody would care. Um, but it was just such a good feeling to have all the support. I was glad I could do my part to... Uh, help bring visibility and representation to the to my community. One reporter asked if he had reached out to his teammates in advance of the announcement. Very few friends around the league knew. Um, I went to the coaches, made sure that they, you know, I wanted to give them a chance to kind of digest, help me in the process. And then I went home, felt like I wanted to be around family and friends at home to uh, make the announcement. Having mentioned the Trevor Project in his video, Nassib says he's glad his coming out could help raise visibility for the LGBTQ advocacy group. Yeah, I mean, I've been blessed with so much in my life. I've literally the best life that I could ask for. So I wanted to do my part to help people that are in tougher situations than I am. And it is a lot bigger than I am. um, And I'm totally cognizant of that. So uh, I'm glad that uh, the Trevor Project got so much um, love and support through the just a 60 second video. So um, it made me really happy that uh, people jumped on board. Got to give a huge thanks to the NFL, uh, Raiders, everybody who supported them, supported me. It's been great. 
Nasib added that the team has been terrific since he's arrived at training camp. It's been great. I knew it was going to be good. I had, I had zero stress about that. Absolutely no worries about it. Got a great locker room, great teammates. I've uh, been met with nothing but love and support. It's been, it's been incredible. Yeah, football players get a bad rap. Um, but, you know, we're humble, hardworking, accepting people. And it's really, you know, this was a great example of that. He also shared that losing the weight of being closeted has meant for much better mental clarity for him. Yeah, it was definitely stressful, you know, growing up and being in the closet and doing all that. It's very stressful for anybody. I, I can speak from experience. Yeah, it's been a great uh, weight off my shoulders. To uh, I've been out to my family friends for years at this point. So uh, it's been good to like not have to lie when I come into work every day. And uh, yeah, it's been good. First couple of days going out, like being out and being the only out player, I, my body felt like jello. You know what I mean? I was very anxious. But now I've like just, I wanted to get this over with, you know, wanted to move on, um, wanted to just be, have a lot of clarity. I feel better today, I feel better than I did yesterday and the day before that. So I'm looking forward to the future. Um, but yeah, I appreciate it. A third round draft pick by the Cleveland Browns in 2016, Nassib, who also played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, signed a three-year, $25 million free agent contract with the Raiders in 2020. At the time of his announcement in June, Raiders owner Mark Davis told ESPN, quote, It's 2021. All the more power to Carl. It does not change my opinion of him as a person or as a Raider. Coach John Gruden also told ESPN, I learned a long time ago what makes a man different is what makes him great. And Raiders quarterback Derek Carr said that as far as he could see, Nassib hasn't been treated any differently. He told reporters, his locker is just a few down from mine, and I just want to make sure that he knows that, man, we just want him to play as hard as he can so we can win a Super Bowl. That's what we're here to do. He went on to add, whether someone agrees or disagrees with what he does on or off the field, that's everybody's opinion and leave it at that. But we're like a family when we come to this building. We better treat him like such. And so, from my point of view, it's been good. On a personal aside, I just want to let all of you listeners know that since I do live in Las Vegas, you can be sure I'll be attending a Raiders game this fall. A Florida man who defaced a pride crosswalk while on his way to a MAGA rally to celebrate former President Donald Trump's birthday will not face hate crime charges. Alexander Jarek appeared in court on charges of criminal mischief and reckless driving with property damage instead. The crosswalks cost $16,000 to install and were unveiled on Saturday, June 12th. But two days later, on Trump's birthday... Jarek was captured on video vandalizing them by doing burnouts with his pickup truck. Video shot of the incident clearly showed his license plate, and after the video went viral online, Jarek turned himself in to authorities. Palm Beach County State Attorney Dave Ehrenberg said the hate crime charge couldn't be added under state law because the city was the victim of the crime, and cities don't have a sexual orientation. Ehrenberg did express regret that he couldn't charge him with the hate crime, saying in a statement that it was clear what the motivation of his actions were. Said Ehrenberg, The facts of this case indicate that the defendant was motivated by prejudice, including a witness who heard someone scream to the defendant to tear up that gay intersection. We were, however, unable to apply Florida's hate crime enhancement statute because the law requires that the defendant select a specific victim based on sexual orientation. Since the Pride Streetscape is the property of the city of Delray Beach, the city is the named victim. Since the city has no sexual orientation, the state's hate crime enhancement law cannot apply. He added, however, that any punishment must include restitution that will pay for the Pride streetscape to be fully restored to its original form. But the decision and the excuse has left a bad taste in residents' mouths. Palm Beach County Human Rights Commission President Rand Hawk told the press, The victim is the Delray Beach LGBTQ Pride streetscape, which was installed to recall and celebrate the achievements of the LGBTQ community, a protected class. Jarek did not pick a random place to commit this crime. This man deliberately selected the intersection where the Delray Beach LGBTQ streetscape is located. He added, 
If surveillance cameras caught someone carving anti-Semitic slurs in the sidewalk in front of a store owned by a Jewish person in Delray Beach, don't you think State Attorney Ehrenberg would charge the person with a hate crime? Amazon Prime Video recently dropped the official trailer for its updated musical film adaptation of Cinderella, and it looks like it's going to be a ball. You guys see what I did there? Ball, Cinderella, go, yeah, okay, anyway. Scheduled for release on September 3rd, the film stars Camilla Cabello as the heroine who is magically aided not by her fairy godmother, but in this incarnation by her gender-neutral Fab G played by Tony, Grammy, and Emmy Award winner Billy Porter. According to the official synopsis, Cinderella is a musically driven, bold new take on the traditional story you grew up with. Our heroine is an ambitious young woman whose dreams are bigger than the world will allow, but with the help of her Fab G, she's able to persevere and make her dreams come true. The film also stars Tony Award winner Edina Menzel as the evil stepmother, Pierce Brosnan as the king, Nicholas Galitzine as Prince Robert, and Minnie Driver as Queen Beatrice. You can find the trailer on therandyreport.com, and remember to look for Cinderella on September 3rd on Amazon Prime Video. Out country music artist Hayden Joseph celebrates flip-flops, farmer tans, shock top, and backyard barbecues with his laid-back summer bop, Backwoods Bougie. In a recent interview with Hollywood Life, he said, Honestly, the inspiration for the song is simple. I grew up in the South, having fun on the water and never acquiring anything fancy for a good time. But when he moved to the city, Hayden found, quote, People there act like you need to spend a ton of money or feel like you're attending exclusive events to have fun. Anyone who grew up outside of a major metro knows that's all BS. There's nothing wrong with being backwoods bougie. Noting that most of his songs have deeply personal lyrics, he admits that this song is by far the most lighthearted of his catalog. He says this one is just meant to lean into country cliches and be clever and fun. He shares, We wanted a summer party song, but we wanted it to be something relatable to us, two gay men who don't love beer. Shockingly, he says kiddingly, that seems to have ruffled diehard country feathers. Feathers or not, I find Backwoods Bougie to be a lot of fun, a great hook, and a total earworm. Trust and believe it's been added to my pool playlist. Backwoods Bougie is available now on all digital platforms. And that brings me to the end of this episode of The Randy Report. If you enjoy catching up on LGBTQ news in a quick podcast, I'd appreciate it if you would share it with your friends. I like to think of The Randy Report as the 60 minutes of gay news, only shorter. And remember, you can find me every day on the internet at therandyreport.com, where I cover the daily news cycle regarding politics, pop culture, and entertainment news of interest to the LGBTQ community and its allies. I'll close out this episode with Hayden Joseph's Backwoods Bougie. Thanks for listening, folks. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Stick a white claw in a yeti koozie. Ain't no shame in being backwards bougie Dark sand, farmer's sand Got an island oasis off the ragged sands Copper tone, sprays old Fold your chair out and claim your throne And stick a white claw in a Yeti koozie Ain't no shame in being backwards bougie Rock and knock off Ray-Bans cause we ain't got Gucci's It ain't fancy, it's just backwards bougie Breezes blowing, jet skis coasting Ain't no gas list, this invite's open Poppin' tops with our lip flops Sun is hot and the cooler stocks So stick a white claw in a Yeti koozie Ain't no shame in being backwards bougie Rockin' knock off Ray-Bans cause we ain't got Rock the boom
take a while. 